In my series on nationalism, today I'll be talking about Joseph Stalin's definition of nationalism. And in his definition, he combines certain objective and certain subjective qualities to define a nation. Now remember, for Stalin, it was crucial to define a nation because he was trying to confine the international communism within the national boundaries. And this is considered one of uh, a very elaborate functionalist kind of definition of nationalism. And knowing it is crucial for all those studying theories of nationalism. So first of all, he decides that a nation can only be constituted when there is a community of people. A nation, therefore, at the very outset, is a community of people who share certain things. So people are crucial to nationalism. I'm going to actually open the book and give you a more precise view of what all he's saying. So it's a community of people, but it's a definite community of people. It's not racial, he says. It's not tribal. Uh, it has to be a community of people which is a historically constituted community. Now that means it can have different tribes in it, it can even have different races in it, but for as long as it's a historically constituted community, that's the first part of constituting a nation. Now this nation is not necessarily ephemeral, it should be a stable community which has a history. So first of all, it's a historically constituted stable community. Next, he says that a nation must have a common language. Now what he means by it is that by and large, there should be a consensus that this is the language we all speak. And what he's not suggesting is that there should be an official language. That's for the state to decide. But people who are historically constituted, have a stable community, should also have a common language. He elaborates on it a little more by suggesting that what he doesn't mean is that two nations, two separate nations cannot have the same language. But one historically constituted stable community of people, another thing that we must add on to it for it to be considered a nation is that it must have a common language. Now, then he poses a question, and the question is, okay, United States and England speak the same language. Would that make them a nation? And of course, his answer is no, because they lack another element of constituting the nation, and that is having a common territory. So what his argument is that at a certain point, these historical people were one nation, which was United Kingdom or Britain, but then people who moved to the new colonies, despite the fact they, that they originally were a stable British community, they go to the colonies, they still have the same language, but now that they have their own territory, that adds to their constitution as a nation and they become a nation, a separate nation. So a stable community historically constituted with a common language, but which also has its own territory. These are the three things so far that he articulates and suggests are needed to constitute a nation. The next, what he points out is that they also must have a shared cohesive economic system. So, so the common economic life, economic cohesion. So they must share a mode of protection, uh, production. They must believe in a certain way of running the economy. So of course, for him, it is communism. But for anyone else, it could be capitalism, it could be property ownership. But by and large, a group of people so constituted historically with a common language and a common territory must also agree upon an economic system, which is cohesive and which is accepted by all. But this is not all. Now we move into the subjective aspects of his definition of nationalism. And that's where he goes to what he calls 
what is usually called the national character. So what he says is a common psychological makeup which manifests, manifests itself in a common culture is one of the characteristic features of a nation. So now we are totally into the realm of culture, that not only should they have a language, a territory, a historically constituted stable community and a mode of production, they also psychologically, in their psychological makeup, share this idea of being together, of being a nation. And that is where we are into the intangible. So based on all these characteristics that he has defined, he then gives us, after a common psychological makeup, what could it be? I mean, think of it. If you live in a socialistic democracy, you do have a common psychological makeup. Now, um, it's not necessarily essential, right? It's constructed through education, through hegemonic projects and everything else. But at the end of the day, if you are in a socialistic economy, you will expect certain things of the government, maybe free education, free health care, care of the poor. But if you are in a deep advanced capitalistic society from United States, then your ideas are formed by that mode of production where people who rely on these things, maybe you will think less of them, or maybe you're too proud and you believe in a myth of individualism. And so you believe in a system where government doesn't intrude too much into your affairs, right? And so you don't want much from the government. So that is the common psychological makeup, which isn't necessarily essential but it's socially and politically constructed. So based on all these ideas, he give us, gives us his comprehensive definition of a nation. And what he means, what he su is suggesting is it's a historically constituted stable community with a common language, a common territory that they share, an economic system upon which they agree, and where they have a sort of a cohesive psychological makeup, which then constitutes a common culture, right? And after all these things come together, it is only when all these characteristics are present together that we have a nation. So that is Joseph Stalin's definition of a nation uh, published and which he tries to, of course, uh, implement in Soviet Russia by destroying the Third International and by for the first time suggesting that communism could be within the confines of a national territory, within the confines of a state. I hope this was helpful to you. I will come back with more of these brief lectures on my nationalism series. And if you have any questions, concerns, if you would like me to add something new, please do let me know. And as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. And as always, peace and love.